Hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Annie News. It's been a while, because uh, I'm wanting to do his Gilgamesh video, but I haven't started watching Babylonia yet. I'm really sorry. There's other things I want to watch. ReZero, I have seen. I haven't watched any of the director's cut. I want to get into that, but I promised my girlfriend that um, I would finish Carol on Tuesday with her, and then possibly she'll watch this with me. Or watch Fake Grand Order Babylonia. But until then, Let's see what was cut from the anime, shall we? I love these, um, learning what's different with these uh, light novel adaptations and things, but let's get into it. Re-Zero is a very uh, can't adaptation wait for season two, man. Even more so now with the director's cut airing this season. But as it is with many light novel adaptations, no matter how faithful, there's gonna be there stuff will missing. always be minor details and brief scenes or dialogue that have to be cut out. Mm -hmm. Some may serve to explain the lore, while others may help to develop characters. In ReZero's case, it's a mix of both. Right. And I figured you may be interested in learning more about this fascinating yep. story. Definitely. Parts of suffering and determination. So much so suffering. Let's go through everything that was skipped from the original ReZero story in this brand new cut content series. Yay! Let's begin. Episode 1. The end of the beginning and the beginning of the end, covering chapters 1 to 3 from the first volume of the light novel. At the beginning of the story, Subaru had already been isekai isekai man, that is a term now, isn't it? Is, or rather, who he was back in the real world. At the time of being sent to the new world, he was just a completely ordinary 17-year-old from a middle-class family in Japan, mm -hmm. venturing towards the end of his third year of high school. I still need to check that out as well, he's kind of to up to any classes. Isn't Shield Hero been added to Subaru that? was at the point in his life where he needed to decide whether he wanted to go to university or jump straight to the workforce, oh. neither of which he was really a fan of. He had the tendency to make up excuses and run away from the things he didn't like resulting in him inadvertently becoming a truant teenager. Hmm. That isolated lifestyle didn't really matter anymore, though, since now he was summoned to another world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything's Subaru changed. almost immediately picked up on after noting the new location he found himself. Yeah, he did pick up on it straight away, didn't he? He was completely... Have I ever another world? Just like Naofumi from Shield Hero or Hajime from Arifuneta, Subaru was in Otaku, and his familiarity with isekai-type stories made his transition to the new world that much smoother. Yeah. However... He was a bit concerned that he was lacking the fundamental safety net that most isekai protected. Yeah, like, where's my powers? <laughs> like some powerful weapon right. or OP magic to help him through his journey. All he had was the clothes on his back, his cell phone and wallet, and his groceries of ramen and chips. So, to Subaru, this wasn't the greatest new beginning. Yeah. But, but... given the situation he was in, he still knew what his priorities were. The first was to find a way to communicate with the townsfolk. And the second was to determine how to use the currency. The communication issue was resolved rather easily, though the exact details on how Subaru was able to communicate with everyone wasn't quite specified. Then, thanks to a nearby merchant, he was able to learn that currency is traded in the form of gold, silver, and copper coins. Right. Now, Subaru was planning to explore the town, but on his way to the main road, he bumped into some thugs, and they dragged him into the back alley. As we saw, he was still of the mindset that this was a typical isekai story. Ooh, so, yeah. logically, he thought he should have some sort of power that would help him get out of this what? situation. No. That thought made him feel as if his body got lighter. He felt as if this world's gravity was a tenth of Earth's gravity, and this gave him the confidence to make oh, the first hit. Cool. But the situation quickly turned when one of the thugs pulled out his knives. Fortunately for him, Felt would run down this alley before any serious damage could be done. Subaru could sense a strong will from her eyes, and because of that, he thought for sure that she would have an overflowing sense of justice. Mm -hmm. But that didn't seem nope. to be the case when she Bye. simply passed him by. No, See ya. <laughs> help would come from Amelia, who made her appearance shortly after. Her mature demeanor and intelligent eyes emitted a noble air that gave her a bewitching charm. Subaru finally understood what it meant when people would say time stood still, because for wow. him, he was experiencing that phenomenon right now. That looks really good now, as well, even drawing though that. he was enthralled by this beautiful girl, when Amelia used her magic to take out the thugs, he wasn't really impressed by what he saw. Oh. He expected something more fantastical and vibrant. But instead, all he saw was lumps of ice materialize and then vanish. Yeah. There wasn't even an That's incantation. Cool. It was as if there was no feeling or emotion put into it. Regardless, it was that plus Puck's presence that Puck, made the thugs man, off. he's so, so cute. Subaru didn't really have room to complain. He then passed out for about ten minutes. After waking up, Amelia yeah. gave her whole excuse as to why Subaru shouldn't feel indebted to her. But the fact that she stopped chasing Belt 
thought the thugs that even healed his wounds allowed Subaru to get a feel for the type of person she was. If she would do that for him, then it's likely she would go out of her way for anyone. Yeah. Doing things that would constantly end up with her getting the short end of the stick, always coming up negative. In that case, she'd just keep losing until there was nothing left. And that was something Subaru wasn't willing to accept. So, as we saw, Subaru offers his services to Amelia mm -hmm. in order to help her find her insignia. The two would investigate for an hour before finding themselves up another alley with a dead end. Subaru states that how even with all his experience, he didn't think that it would be that difficult. It's with this comment that Amelia first witnesses Subaru's pride. She couldn't help but glare at him at his seemingly high opinion of himself. But how did they even get lost in the first place? Mm. Well, as it would turn out, both had full confidence that the other knew where they were going. Oh, that's it brilliant. Was rather comedic, actually. That's clever. Both I love it. And they both just assume they both know where they're going. That's great. But obviously Subaru had no clue, and mm -hmm. Amelia wasn't from this city. So she wouldn't know either. It also didn't help mm. that Subaru had no idea what any of the signs around the city said. Oh, I couldn't so read it, right. So realizing that they were getting nowhere, Amelia takes a moment to try to communicate with some lesser spirits. Beings that are in a cool. state prior to becoming real spirits. They're not quite self-aware like Puck, but with time they'll develop an increasing amount of knowledge and power. Subaru, witnessing this event for the first time, decides that it would be a good idea to interrupt. Of course, that just caused the spirits to panic and disappear. <laughs> Amelia became frustrated because had he interrupted a less experienced spirit mage, then the spirits could very well have attacked him. Oh wow, Yet they could have hurt him. Couldn't Damn. understand how something so cute could be so dangerous. Well, wow. it was only <laughs> after Puck told him that he could reduce him to a pile of dust in a matter of seconds that Subaru understood Ooh. that maybe he shouldn't be messing with them. Nah, anyway, there's that episode Amelia where Puck just like slices his head off, and it's like whoa. Spirits. But in order to make Subaru feel less stupid she mentioned that she didn't expect to get many answers from them anyway that just made subaru feel worse since now he was being more of a hindrance than helpful no. amelia being his only meaningful connection to this world meant that he had to do everything in his power to maintain that relationship and right now he wasn't doing a very good job of it this poor guy <laughs> to when everyone finally introduces themselves subaru's introduction made amelia realize that perhaps subaru actually had no clue where he was hmm. but that was weird to her because he didn't carry any of the traits of a commoner or a peasant everything from his build skin, interesting hair, to i the like it clothes he was wearing, a lot of assumptions being made that he'd been living a life of luxury well relatively speaking anyway. <laughs> wondering if that was the case subaru had to tell her that she was completely wrong when she asked for his reasoning he determined that saying he was isekai would just set a precedent for Yeah, because he's going to use that term. <laughs> I was isekai so here. <laughs> not wanting to risk the chance of severing his one and only relationship, he decided not to say anything at all. This hesitation caused Amelia to back off as if she had pried into something that she shouldn't have. Subaru did feel bad for not telling her, but Amelia was able to acknowledge that it was something that he couldn't talk about. Hmm. When Subaru nice. asked for her name next... Amelia went a bit quiet, as she hesitantly gave the name Satella. Yeah. Subaru could sense that this was a name that she didn't seem to like, so he decided not to call her that at all. But now it felt like she had placed a significant gap between them. So the two quietly returned to the main road and wandered for another ten minutes before coming across the little girl. In a situation oh. like this, Subaru couldn't help but feel that Amelia would completely drop everything she was doing and go assist this helpless child. You see, throughout the day, Subaru had noticed something about Amelia. She was the type of person who was too kind for her own good. And Subaru knew that the more time they spent on other things, the less likely They're it would be get that what they she could needs doing done. Yeah. Amelia knew Subaru had a point, but she still just couldn't ignore this girl. So after finding the girl's mom that had a heartwarming conversation on the bridge, they finally brainstormed what their next steps should be. Given that they were in the largest city in the nation, one that holds a population of over 300,000 demi-humans and humans alike, it's no wonder that they kept getting lost. Mm. And because they it's had a big spent place. an hour searching already, they didn't really have the luxury of making any more errors. Subaru figured the best approach now would be to just return to where the insignia was stolen. That way they could question any potential witnesses. Lucky for them, the Apple salesman was able to point them in the direction of a place in the slums known as the Loot Cellar. Loot that was cellar. the place to go if they were looking Sounds for Sounds like goods. a place you'd get some loot. minutes passed walking from the inner city to the slums. When they got there, Subaru expected their presence to attract trouble. But instead, the people there were actually really nice to him. Subaru assumed that it was because of his charm. But Amelia points out <laughs> hey, that hey. it's probably because of how disheveled he looked. 
I mean, after his beating, Subaru had all this blood and dirt on his clothes. Ah, so, so he fits he in. Much fit right in. Right. On the other hand, <laughs> that was brilliant. Martina's affluent parents made her receive the opposite kind of treatment. No one would even give her the time of day. This meant that Subaru was finally able to help out since the people of the slums were only willing to talk with him. At this point, two hours had gone by since Subaru first met Amelia, and the sun was starting to set in the distance. As we know, Puck only has enough mana to manifest himself out of his crystal vassal from the hours of 9 to 5. Yeah. Meaning, Amelia now knew that she had to Bye, take Puck. since Subaru was so visibly weak. It did hurt when she called him out as weak. But Subaru knew that that was the only way she could phrase it since he could tell that she wasn't very good at hiding how she truly felt. Mm. You see, even though he'd only met her a couple of hours ago, it felt as if he'd known Amelia for much longer. Bless. Already he was able to pick up on these minor traits in her personality. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for Amelia. Her first impressions of Subaru weren't entirely positive. Great. <laughs> anyway, Subaru manages to figure out the whereabouts of this loot cellar. It was in the deepest part of the slums built against a tall defensive wall that served to mark the city's borders. Turns out, Subaru and Amelia had traveled all the way from the city center to its very edge. Normally, it wouldn't have taken them three to four hours to get there, but because of everything they'd already gone through, that's how long had passed. Uh... As Subaru opened the door to go in, he was quickly overwhelmed by the dark interior. Amelia had to give him a white crystal to use as a flashlight. Oh, cool. It was a common mineral known as Lagmite Ore. But before fully entering the cellar, Subaru would refer to Amelia as Satella for the first time. Up until now, he had been avoiding her name because of how she seemed to feel about it earlier. Even now, he felt a bit bad for calling her. Huh. But this time, because finally was isn't the first time in the anime does Amelia it when he's, taken aback he's dead, the and then it finishes with her saying, Wow, why do you use my name? To him after. Unsure as to what exactly Again, not saying that, because I don't know. He says yeah. he'd prefer her to just properly thank him with a smile. This flustered Amelia even more. But to Subaru's surprise, she decided to put on a genuine look of gratitude. This was the first time that Subaru had gotten Amelia to smile, Aww. and she made sure to burn that image into his memory. Now, Subaru entering the shop and then dying for the first time was pretty much the same in all adaptations. Yeah. So, after restarting, his initial confusion turned to panic when his thoughts became overwhelmed with those of Amelia and Puck. He thought that if someone as weak and unimportant as him could still be alive, then for sure Puck and Amelia had, had to be as well, yeah. He was overcome by a sense of urgency that far surpassed anything he'd ever experienced in his entire life. Every decision he's ever made in the past paled in comparison to the actions that he had to take now. That's just how finding Amelia was to him. It took him two whole hours, but he was eventually able to find his way back to the loop cellar, mm -hmm. arriving approximately two hours earlier than the first time. Right. If he actually knew where he was going, then he would have gotten there even faster. But remember, he couldn't read any of the signs. Yeah, he doesn't know where he's his going. Only <laughs> was the recollection of various landmarks, which frankly wasn't even very helpful considering that most of the time in his last life was spent staring at Amelia. Anyway, after knocking on the door, the old man Rom opened it with such force Bang. that sent Subaru That's back. That's close. He was then manhandled and grilled until deemed completely harmless. After which Rom was kind enough to let him in, hear what he had to say, and even insist that Subaru should join him for a drink because of how tense he looked. Aww. Initially, Subaru refused, since technically he was still a minor. Yeah, he's but not old enough to drink. But persistence was so overwhelming that Subaru felt as if he had no choice. Go ahead, lad. It wasn't really something he enjoyed, but it did help to ease a bit of the tension he was feeling. This allowed him to tell Rom all the details behind what and who he was looking for even stating that he was ready to trade his own possessions for the insignia, huh. but not with the chips he first brought out. Subaru went oh, straight for his cell straight for the phone. leading to the whole media discussion now rather than later. If you don't recall, media were devices that allow its users to use magic without the need for opening a gate. You see, normal magic users have to pass their mana through a gate in order to give it a form that has an effect on reality. When someone is incapable of opening that gate, the media serves to do just so that, does it for essentially him, yeah. allowing non-magic users to use magic. As for magic itself, well, that's a whole other topic that will be explored further as the story progresses. So, after seeing the cell phone, Rom was pretty confident Subaru could fetch a far greater price for it than the insignia, so all he had to do was wait for Felt and make the trade. When Felt finally arrived, she was a lot less welcoming in the novels. She was wholly skeptical of Subaru and his offer. Oh. She even thought that maybe Rom had sold her out. I mean, she Interesting. had to not to let anyone else into his place while oh, she was finishing. He had, ah. Yet, here was this stranger waiting for her inside. Wow, yeah, interesting. He even knew Class. her name and what she stole without ever even meeting her. So it makes sense why she'd be at least a little bit suspicious. Hmm. She decided she would only listen to what Subaru had to say if it meant it made her more money. 
That's why when Rama praised the cell phone at a higher value than the badge, she became more than willing to accept the trade. Of course, that was only if his media was worth more than what her other client was offering. It had to be at least 10 holy coins, which was a value of currency that Subaru didn't even know existed. As you would find out, a holy coin was worth 2 gold coins, making it the highest denomination of coin in the kingdom. Right. For context, the badge was valued at around 5 gold coins, so the other client was willing to pay 4 times the price for it. Uh. Subaru's phone was worth double that. So, for now, he had the advantage. Yeah, he did. Eventually, the other client would show up. Yeah, that's the problem. The door, uh -oh. Subaru and Rom would have a little heart to heart. Subaru felt he needed to express his gratitude since Rom had done so much to help him out. For some reason, though, his pride got the best of him again, and he found the need to highlight that it was mostly because of his personal efforts. That made it a bit awkward for Rom, uh... but Subaru still made it clear that he wouldn't have gotten to this point without the old man's help. Rom says to make nothing of it. He was just grateful that Subaru was trying to peacefully resolve the fact that Phelps stole the badge. It seemed that Rom had come to the conclusion that Subaru was a thoughtful gentleman from a wealthy family. Oh, That's why he allowed Subaru to insert himself into the deal. Sure, he may have just been looking out for Phelps' best interest, but you can't really fault him considering that she's pretty much his family. Yeah. Anyway, Phelps returns with Elsa, a young, beautiful woman whose oh, every movement gave dear. off an air of eroticism. Though, it was her pale white skin and dark black hair that stood out the most, because those were features that were considered to be rare in this world. Oh, okay. As Felt was explaining the situation, Elsa would occasionally glance in Subaru's direction, flustering him every time their eyes made contact. Towards the end, we know the deal goes in Subaru's favor, leaving Elsa with nothing but a look of disinterest since the fault was with her employer. And, and then... <laughs> Now, if she had lost the trade because of her own mistake, then that would have been a different scenario. But she was willing to leave until Subaru foolishly answered Elsa's final question. No. The way she had asked him made him feel like there was no reason to lie. That was his mistake. His answer triggered Elsa's murderous intent. Had Felton the old man not quickly intervened, then Subaru would have died right there. Oh, damn. Now, given the tight space they were in and the size of Rob's weapon, it yeah. seemed as if Rob had the advantage. I mean, there wasn't really much room but to But she's so fast. Yet, somehow Elsa seemed in control of the fight. She quickly dispatched the old man, then moved on to Felt. Subaru knew that she didn't stand a chance. He wanted to scream and distract Elsa so that Felt could run away and maybe get help. Even buying her time by sacrificing himself was much better than simply letting her die. After all, oh. it was his fault that this was happening. happening yeah. But after coming to that conclusion, Felt had already left to engage Elsa. Her first direct strike missed, so she decided to try again from a different angle, using all the walls and ceiling as surfaces to switch her momentum. Cool. But even with all that speed, Elsa never lost track of her. She cut Belt straight through the chest, deep enough to show a clean slice through not only her bones but organs as well. So, with what was pretty much the only two threats down, Elsa's expression returned to what seemed to be its normal state, one of pure boredom. It was like nothing had even happened. This angered Subaru, since the unlikely relationship he got to witness between the old man and Belt was now gone. Oh, it was as yeah. if, in the end, it was all completely meaningless. So, Subaru tries to attack, but that just leads to him getting a broken nose, shattered teeth, and cracked ribs. Bloody hell. The only reason he was able to get back up was because of the endorphins his brain released to reject the pain. Somehow, he felt better now, though. But the outcome didn't change. His next attack resulted in him getting blown away again leaving him with a broken shoulder this time. Subaru started to scream even more, not because of the pain, but instead because of the hopeless situation he found himself. Rage, it's just like, ah, come on, what do I do? Also removing most of his already shattered teeth in the process. Damn. Despite all that, though, Subaru got back up. His determination was admirable, but unfortunately, it was too little too late. Elsa was bored now. She figured that it was time to finish the job and move on. She sunk into the shadows, hiding her presence and leaving Subaru unsure as to where the next attack would come from. All he could do was rely on the brief sounds that came from her light movements. By the time Subaru realized where she was coming from, he was barely able to sidestep the first blip, though going into the counterattack made him vulnerable to her second Class. Blip. With his stomach now open, oh. Subaru's pain could no longer be suppressed. He collapsed to the floor, screaming in agony all while his consciousness began to fade. It brought him to an all-too-familiar state. Yet, just as it was the first time around, he couldn't help but cower in the face of death. Numerous questions raced through his head, but that all led to a fear that he couldn't help but succumb to. No matter how much he wanted to reject death, death still came, and so Subaru died for the second time. 
bringing us to a good end point for this episode of Cut Content. As you can tell, the only thing this episode missed was very minor details. Still though, yeah, it's not important to the story, but it's still cool. The overall plot and development of certain characters, and I'm sure future episodes will have more major moments for us to highlight. Anyway, personally, I'm a huge fan of Free Zero, oh, so amazing. I'll be doing a lot of content to cover the director's cut, as well as even more once season two comes out. And oh my god, yes. And if you like yes. as well, then be sure to let me know in the comments or leave a like so I know how often to release these. Now, before I go, don't forget you can get my Isekai apparel through the Teespring link. Oh, that's class. But, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao. Ciao. Bam. That was class. That was absolutely class. I like that. I'm definitely going to... Keep it days. Some re-zero. Because I like that we got the director's cut and then we got season two this year as well. That's absolutely boss. I can't wait to see how the story continues. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. But uh yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, if you already. leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys. So you guys, nick the